Hello everyone, I am Dibanjana. I am a researcher and a PhD graduate from the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research, Mumbai. Welcome to my channel and in this current series, we will go in depth into academic writing and publishing. Starting off with episode one, we will understand what is academic writing and publishing. The topics you will learn in this video are, if you are in India and you want to do a PhD, where can you do it from? We will look at what is academic publishing and why you should be motivated to publish. Also, we will look at journal aims and scopes and why they are very critical for you to understand before you submit your paper. Usually, academic writing is pursued by students when they do a master's degree, a PhD degree or a postdoctoral position. You can do a PhD in India from the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. You can do it from the different Department of Atomic Energy Institutes like the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research in Mumbai and Hyderabad. Then there is the Homi Bhabha Center for Science Education. There is the National Center for Biological Sciences. There is the Shaha Institute of Nuclear Physics. And there is the International Center for Theoretical Sciences. Apart from that, there are various IITs and NITs throughout the country. There are the ISARs throughout the country, Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research. Also, there are different Indian Institutes of Management which are throughout the country. And apart from that, there are various central and state universities. And if you want to pursue a government job, there are options in government jobs like the Bhava Atomic Research Center and the Defense Research and Development Organization as well as the Indian Space Research Organization where you can pursue a PhD along with your job. Now, by no means is this list exhaustive and these are a few of the institutes in India where you can do your PhD and there are many more. Before we start off into academic publishing, let me tell you a small incident. So once when I had come home on vacation from my institute, I had recently published a paper and a few of my relatives, they asked me whether I get paid on writing the paper and publishing the paper. Well... So are you paid to publish scientific papers? Well, the answer is an emphatic no. In fact, in some cases, the authors or the institute might have to pay to publish their scientific papers. This is called open access publishing, which I'll be addressing in a later video. So, what motivates scientists to publish academic papers? Scientists spend long hours in the lab or their office to discover new research. So, what keeps them motivated to write their research? Well, it is for the joy of publishing and, more practically, to share about new discoveries to the scientific community. It is a matter of pride and joy for a researcher to share their work with their colleagues and to the rest of the world. Now, what is an academic paper or a research paper? If you go and search this term in Wikipedia, you will see that academic publishing is the subfield of publishing which distributes academic research and scholarship. Academic work is published in academic journals, articles, books or theses. Now, why is academic writing important? It is a way to communicate your ideas and research to your peers, teachers and external audience. It allows you to present your findings in a systematic and organized way which in turn helps others to learn. It is the backbone of scholarly communication and it is how we share knowledge and ideas in a structured and credible way. The characteristics of academic writing are that it is evidence-based and requires the citation of sources, which means that you can't just make claims or statements without providing evidence to back them up. And when you do provide evidence, you need to cite your sources to give credit to the original authors. Second, it is usually more formal and structured than other forms of writing. It follows specific conventions and standards that make it easy for others in the field to understand and follow your work. It uses specific vocabulary that is discipline specific, meaning that certain terms and phrases are used that are unique to the field of study. And also, it is impersonal and objective, focusing on the information or research rather than the writer 
Personal opinions or biases should not influence the presentation of the information or arguments. There are different publishing houses and societies that can publish your work, such as the American Association for the Advancement of Science, Springer Nature, Elsevier, Wiley, and the American Chemical Society. You may be recognizing some of these names, and there are many more publishing houses. So these publishing houses would publish your paper in a journal. So now the next question which is relevant is who is the audience or who will read your paper now this question is very important to understand because it is inherently linked to the aims and scopes of a journal to understand let us consider that journals may have topics which are general or the topics may be highly specific the journal can also comprise of aims and scopes which are in between general and highly specific within the spectrum. And let me give you four examples of journals. Number one, science. Number two, nature. Number three, protein science. And number four, ACS applied materials and interfaces. Now, I would like you to place these four journals in terms of their scope and aims which you think from general to highly specific. So if you have read these journals, you can do so or from the name, you can guess where these journals may lie from general to highly specific in the spectrum. Now, science and nature are journals which have broad aims and scopes. However, protein science and ACS applied materials and interfaces are highly specific. So the aims and scope of a journal are important to understand when you submit your paper. Whether the journal's aims and scopes are broad or specific determines how to write the entire paper. Let me explain this using two papers from the Journal of the American Chemical Society, abbreviated as JAX. The first paper is this, in which you can see that there are reaction mechanisms and compounds in the graphical abstract. This particular paper is highly chemistry oriented. In the second paper that I have chosen, you can see that the paper is talking about protein folding. So in this paper, you would not see such compounds drawn or reaction mechanisms. The journal aims and scopes are given in the website of the journal. So you can see the aims and scopes of the journal biochemistry, where the topics are related to biopolymers like proteins, DNA and RNA. And they even have a section which says that the journal does not cover the following areas. So this is one example of a journal where it is more specific in nature the next example i have is science and here you can see that science welcomes submissions from all fields of science and from any source so this is an example of a journal which is more broad or general in its aims and scopes so you can realize that it is important to look at the aims and scope of a journal before you submit your manuscript and your manuscript and how you have written it should align with the journal requirements or otherwise you may have your journal rejected or just refer to a sister journal. With that, thank you for watching and I have a mini quiz for you. So the questions are, why should you consider publishing a scientific paper? Is it A, to let the general public know about your new scientific discoveries? Is it B, to earn money? C. To let the scientific community know about your new scientific discoveries or is it D. Both options A and C. The second question is, in open access publishing, who typically covers the costs? Is it A. The readers, B. The authors, C. The readers and the authors or D. Neither the readers nor the authors. You can write your answers in the comments section below. So if you have any questions till now, you can write them in the comments section below. Stay tuned for episode 2 in which we will discuss the different parts of a paper and much more. Thank you for watching.